Ah, Veligion and welcome to my channel. My name is Ludi and today we're gonna make Orlando Bloom happy as we will be restoring the Kingdom of Jerusalem as the last remnant of the Jerusalemites, namely Cyprus. Despite starting off as an OPM with an awesome flag and not so much of an awesome sprite, we do have an ace up our sleeves and that ace is actually our horrible, horrible heiress Charlotte of Lusignan. We're gonna go ahead Ahead and go to the estates interface summon the diet go for whichever agenda best suits us plus one admin and military power we're also going to set up the encourage development edict and dev up this province once which means we can give out the plus one diplo power as well and sell titles as well as seize five percent crownlands we also given out the uh, supremacy over the crown oversight by the clergy patronage of the arts and private trade fleets for the cheaper ships diplomatically speaking cyprus doesn't have any actual friends so we're gonna have to do this the hard way once your king dies and this horrible creature becomes your leader the mamluks actually get a uh, event that makes you a vassal of them if you accept it accept it and become a vassal of the mamluks and then you can get the uh, independence supported by the ottomans and with the ottomans we're gonna crush the mamluks that is option one the easy way the not so easy way is taking all of these lands expanding into this this area getting a power base and death warring the mamluks which option are we going for today well stick around and find out so first thing we did is we started getting some claims on ramazan and karaman as we will try to get some lands here before we have to deal with the mamluks and we are also going to delete the fort that we have in cyprus since we don't really need that fort there we also are going to be building some light ships here two light ships should be fine to help us boost our trade income later on we're going to recruit some uh units as well you can also make your starting ruler a general in case you want to go for the vassalization option with the Mamluks, which honestly is the easy way. A little bit of time has passed and we managed to get claims on both Karaman and Ramazan. And we have attacked Ramazan since they're only allied to Kandar, so it should be a fairly easy war. We might even be able to disembark in time to wipe out their entire army there. And that's just... Uh, the start of our amazing conquest within this region. You should also start improving relations with the Ottomans as you want to have good relations with them before you uh, become a vassal of Amaleks. Especially if you're taking lands in this area, they might be quite upset with you. So you want to offset that with uh, some good relation improvements. Now, the thing is, Kandar is also allied to Karaman. So before I peace out Ramazan, I probably will attack Karaman also. Since it means I don't need to deal with Kandar twice. So I finished sieging down Adana Kebab and I'm also into the uh, Kandari areas, but there's an issue. I wanted to attack Karaman, however, they've also allied Akoyunlu, so I cannot really attack them anymore. That means I'm gonna have to attack Dulkadir instead, which is also allied to Kandar. So whatever I do, it all goes back to Kandar, doesn't it? Gonna bring this guy back so we can uh, peace out Kandar for the time being. We will come back into these lands in a second. We can only get a white piece for now, but that is fine. I don't really want anything else except for a white piece for the time being as I really want to get my uh, lands in Adana. Fully annex Adana Kebab and that means we've doubled in size now. Bring our troops back home and we can even get more claims on the adjacent provinces. We got our claim on Adul Qadir and we will be attacking once more going back to war with Kandar but because we wiped out their army in the previous war they should not really have any troops. They do have 1000. Never mind. Sadly the Ottomans have decided that they want to attack Kandar I'm guessing Yep, and Kandar being allied to uh, Karaman, they're probably going to be taking some Karamani lands too, which is not great, but it depends if they don't take too much stuff, and actually they should not be able to fully annex Karaman, so we might be able to take a couple of provinces for ourselves before uh, they finish off everything here. On the bright side though, them attacking Kandar means that we don't need to siege this down ourselves, so after we siege uh, Dulkadir, we should be fine with uh, peace still here. Taking Dulkadir is quite important, not only because it, it provides you an economic and military power base, but it also provides access to Akoyunlu, which, if they are not allied to the Ottomans, which sadly in my game they are, would be a very easy target otherwise. But we could do the old switcheroo where we attack Karaman and do not cobbledrate Akoyunlu, yet still take stuff from them. That would be one option. We could take Raqqa here and Urfa, and we can release Syria from Raqqa and then feed our Syrian vassal 
castle, the Syrian lands. And holy mother of Turks. Uh, they basically fully annexed Karaman minus the city of Karaman itself. But when you think about it, this means that if we vassalize Karaman, we would have all of this for ourselves. And if we vassalize Karaman, uh, it would really piss off the Ottomans. But at the same time, it would mean that we can actually get some strong allies in the West since having a vassal and growing a little bit means that other nations consider us a worthy ally or at least a decent ally. Probably Venice would be our best chance at an alliance here. So I am going to start improving myself with the, the Venetians here and I'm going to change my plans. I'm not going to become a vassal of the Mamluks. Why choose the easy way when you can go for the hard way, right? That means we're also going to be disinheriting this crappy, absolute crappy heiress that kind of makes me happy somehow and we will be recycling a third time patronage of the arts after we get the loyalty there now all we got to do is wait for Endart to get siege down so that we can white piece him and so we can fully annex Dulkadir. whilst we're waiting for that though we are going to be attacking Karaman and we're also going to be going into the war against uh Akoyunlu as such that means we got to bring back this diplomat from here and we can bring this guy also back we're going to send uh our guy over to Akoyunlu to start getting a spy network in Akoyunlu and because Karaman doesn't have an army also it should be a fairly easy war. This was a fairly easy siege. I also managed to defeat uh, the Akoyunlu army because I've recruited the free company so I have considerably more troops than they do and now with this siege finished we're gonna go and siege down the rest of Akoyunlu. Sadly Kandar still doesn't want to piece us out so we're gonna have to wait until the Ottomans siege down Sinop. Kandar was finally annexed and that means I can fully annex these guys myself. Coalition wise it's just the Ottomans that would join in but hopefully they're not actually going to join in. We are going to be concentrating development here. Well actually we don't have enough development to concentrate so never mind we're just going to core these things up and we have to deal with these rebels as well but we are going to focus and prioritize uh, sieging down Akoyunlu first. After a word that dragged on for much longer than I expected it to, finally I managed to uh, finish off the Akoyunlus and I am going to cancel their alliance with the Ottomans, take all their money and the south three provinces. This is going to be very helpful because I have a lot of loans that I need to pay off right now and obviously we're going to be releasing Syria from the southernmost province here. Before we do that however, we are going to be concentrating. One dev is better than no dev of course and we will be vassalizing Karaman. This this is actually a really good thing and we were quite lucky to have them as an opium since aside from the fact that we can feed them all the cores it is going to boost our power up by quite a bit and it is going to make us get some proper alliances. We also can get a proper rival and we're going to go for Ako Yunlu here and of course release Syria and Al Raqqa. Go for these strong duchies since you have two vassals now and that gives you an extra two diplo relation slots. Don't get too excited though nobody wants to ally you just yet. Some of the diet go for which whichever agenda best suits us again and we are gonna seize land and gonna have to kill off some of these rebels here pesky rebels you also might have noticed that we already have 25 percent crownlands despite only seizing land once or maybe twice that is mainly because we expanded the size of our kingdom by quite a lot and each new added province added even more crownlands to the overall amount of crownlands that we have i'm also improving relations with the uh, akoyunlu which is a rival of both the mammal and the Ottomans and depending on how this war goes I might take advantage of that a little bit and feed back my Karamani cores. EU4 AI logic. It is 1463. I've developed quite a bit. I've got a strong army. I was literally about to declare war on the Mamluks. To my surprise look at what the Mamluks did. They declared war on the Ottomans for the conquest of Icho. Uh what? I'm the easiest target ever and look at this the Mamluks still have a massive amount of troops and and the Turks actually had half of this two minutes ago since they lost the war against the Venetians, which is probably why the Mamluks attack. But within two minutes, they went from 20,000 troops to 50,000. Ottomans are ridiculously overpowered and I am just going to profit from this. I was about to start taking loans and go into full-on death war, but I will wait until this war is 
over or at least until the Mamluks lose a little bit more troops so that I can attack them. Also cannot get an alliance with Karakoyunlu since they have a hostile attitude towards me but if I improve a little bit more and I uh, kiss a little bit of Venetian ars I might get the alliance with the Venetians which will be quite beneficial to me and they've also improved relations with me so they obviously want to get the alliance also. I get an alliance with the uh, knight however and I am thinking of attacking the Byzantines before they get crushed by the Ottomans so I can get one province and release them as a vassal afterwards. But that being said my main focus is going to be the Mamluks however and I will be attacking them with the Reconquest CB for my uh, vassal Syria here. For the time being Karakoyunlu is not joining since they are a rival to each other and Hormuz is malevolent so they might join later on. So I got to keep an eye on this make sure I attack them when the right time arrives. The Mamluks and the Ottomans have peaced out with a white piece so not much damage was done. We are going to be attacking the Mamluks but beforehand we can ally the Poles simply because we are rivaled to the Ottomans and they have rivaled Poland also so that means we have a common enemy. The alliance with the Poles is great and quite unexpected to be honest because it's going to protect me against the Ottomans attack when I'm at war with the Mamluks. I've also hired a discipline advisor. A morale of armies advisor would have been better but it's better than nothing. And I'm also going to be selling titles to get a hundred ducats as well as I am going to go for the indebted to the burgers guild that's going to give me five loans which are one percent interest which is great since I basically pay 0.14 interest. That is almost nothing and this is going to allow us to have a strong army and be able to withstand the attacks of the uh, Mamluks during this war. Gonna also hire a few extra companies here. I am going over my force limit by quite a little bit but it's not a massive deal. It is important that you do this. This is essentially a death war. We can have up to 48 loans and we only have five for the time being so we are gonna be a-okay. Hire as many mercenary companies as you need. Johnny Sins is taking control of this army so we should have a pretty easy thrust into the Mamluks. What on earth is this? Naples just got the PU over Burgundy. Jesus Christ, Nape. Whenever you're ready, declare the war on the Mamluks. Go for whichever city is closest to you so you can take that. Halab is a good choice, actually. And declare the war. Try and take out, if you can, some of the Mamluk troops early on in the war. For example, this 9k here, I might... Nope, not gonna be able to wipe them out because they just assigned a 6 maneuver general, which means they're gonna get away. Very big brain AI. Very, very big brain AI. We're gonna send the Circassian Guard, which has a 3 siege general to Halab to siege this down fast and work our way south slowly. Make sure you keep your troops close to each other. You don't want to have a very big gap between your armies as the Mamluks might snipe you if that happens. By the way, Western troops, which is the ones that you have, are pretty freaking trash when compared to the uh, Muslim units, which the Mamluks have. My units are not Western units. They are Anatolian units, which are way better than the Mamluk units. Since I've recruited recruited them from the province of Karaman, my vassal. If you manually go to the province, as long as you have the cash for it, I'm gonna get another loan so I can show this off. You can recruit Yaya Infantry and Muslim Cavalry, which is three times better than the regular cavalry. So you can mix this in. Muslim Cavalry from the Anatolian group, Muslim Dual Infantry from the Muslim Tech group, which you can recruit in uh, Syria. So you have four pip infantry units and five pip cavalry units rather than having three pip and three pip units. That's a massive difference and that's why my troops are going to absolutely crush the Mamluks. There you go. Despite the Mamluks having a pretty decent general and everything else, we crushed them so hard it's insane. And it seems like we're going to have a pretty big battle. I think this battle is going to decide whether we're going to win or lose the war since uh, I'm pretty done with my manpower here and okay, that was pretty good. And uh, if I would have lost that battle, it would not have been pretty good for me. I do have mainly mercenary units at this point since I've uh, consolidated my main army, but I'm reaching the cap limit on my loans and when that happens, it's not good. I can take up to 59 loans now and I have 30. So this war is taking longer than I would have liked it to take. And the siege of Cairo was fairly fast. We can now piece them out. We're taking these lands in the south so we can form Jerusalem and we're giving out a few of the lands to Syria but not everything. Most importantly we're taking all the money that we can take so that we can fix our apps 
absolutely dreadful economy. We're gonna go bankrupt if they if we don't pay off uh, enough of these loans here. So uh, hopefully we have enough to pay as many as we can. Obviously pay the four percent loans off first before the one percenters, since the one percent loans are basically no interest. All right, we paid enough loans. We're not gonna go bankrupt anymore, and now we are gonna be consolidating dev here and coring up all of Palestine. Same thing for Transjordan. And because we're not going to be going to war anytime soon with anyone, we're going to be disbanding most of these mercenary companies and just keeping the ones that we uh, really need so that we don't get attacked by the Ottomans or someone else. Fast forwarding a little bit to once we've cored up these lands and we've made Jerusalem a full state of our country, we can now restore the Kingdom of Jerusalem. Before we do that, however, I'm going to sell titles for a little bit because I actually still need to pay quite a lot of my loans off. I'm going to also recycle the patronage of the arts so I get some more prestige that is gonna help me in future wars and remember to pick only the 4% loans that you need to pay off not the 1% ones those are okay and voila booyah now we got the kingdom of Jerusalem we're gonna go for new traditions and ambitions which means that we now have the Jerusalem ideas that include missionary strength and maintenance reduction manpower discipline fort defense and diplo reputation plus two Overall, quite decent ideas and better than the uh, Cypriot ideas. We still have the same mission tree as the Cypriots, the Crusader mission tree, but most importantly, we get the Crusader state and we also get cores on this entire area here. So next war against the Mamluks, we're actually going to do the reconquest for our own wars, not the Assyrian wars. You also can choose to become a Sunni uh, Jerusalem if you want to. That's on the table, not ruling it out, but that is not the smartest idea as being the only Catholic here means you get a Deus Volt and everybody else around. So because of the government reform, we can attack every single infidel around us with the Holy War CB that you would normally be getting from going for religious ideas. It's the same CB except you can get it very early on and without having to do the religious idea set. So it is quite a good government reform. So after you've established Jerusalem, later expansion obviously should be within the Mamluk lands and the Arabian peninsula as well as take care of the Ottomans and take at least one province in Byzantium and release them as a vassal if the Ottomans took over the rest or if you can fully vassalize from one war you can do that however in my case here they got 119 war score so I cannot vassalize them. Playing as Jerusalem can be quite entertaining and very different from a regular playthrough so you definitely are going to really enjoy it. Idea wise, go for quantity ideas. It really helped me out so much in the war against the Mamluks. As a second idea, I recommend that you go for trade ideas so you can have a strong economy and filter in trade from the Asian parts into your own trade nodes. And the beautiful part about this is that you can also go exploration ideas if you want to. You just need to take a few lands into the southern area here and then you can start exploring and colonizing Australia, establishing then a Jerusalemite Australia rather than Mamluk Australia. You obviously can also colonize the African parts and go into the New World. Or if you don't want to go colonial, you can always go economic with quantity to play toll or turn it into a world conquest by going for diplomatic admin influence ideas. Whichever the case, Jerusalem is not going to fail to offer a lot of enjoyment. And why do my troops look Arabic? Oh yeah, it's because of the mercenaries. 